We're looking at the internal structures of a fetal pig. The pigs are in the phylum chordata, the subphylum vertebrata, and the class mammalia. This is an example of a mammal. Let's have a look at the, um, the structures that we can find in both the thoracic and the abdominal cavities of this animal. So um, to determine which cavity you're looking at, the first thing that you should locate is a muscular wall called the diaphragm. We can see the diaphragm right here, right here, and this was in fact attached um, to the chest wall above as well. So this is the diaphragm. This is un a unique structure to mammals and muscular movements, um, so up and down of the diaphragm are what inflates and deflates the lungs. Okay, so speaking of that, we do see uh, one of the lungs on this side and the other lung on this side right here. Okay, so those are the two lungs. And in between those, we find then, of course, the large four-chambered heart. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the thoracic cavity. Below the diaphragm, then, the first organ we find is this large multi-lobed structure. This is, of course, the liver, okay, which produces bile, which is involved in the breakdown of fat. Bile is stored in a small sac underneath the liver. We can see it right here, okay, this little bag. That is the gallbladder, the gallbladder right there. Now, this big bag right here below the liver, this is the stomach, so this is where food enters. Um, of course, food comes in through the mouth, down the pharynx, through the esophagus, and then into the stomach. From the stomach, we can find, uh, of course, uh, the small intestines. That's all these many, many coils here. It's actually very, very long when it's all stretched out. So you'll note that um, the name sounds a little bit deceiving because I say small intestine, but it seems incredibly long. Um, but the name refers more to the diameter or the circumference of the intestine and not its length. Um, while we're talking about the intestine, I will point out the mesentery. You can see here, um, this animal has been dye injected with latex, so you can see uh, where the blood vessels are essentially. So oxygen is able to uh, be sent to the intestines via this mesentery, this membrane, which is highly vascularized. And in addition, since the small intestine is the site of nutrient absorption, uh, we can see that all of these nice little blood vessels would be able to um, then absorb and take in the nutrients that have been uh, absorbed through the wall of the small intestine. I'm just going to go back a little bit. Um, in the mesentery, between usually the stomach and the first coil of small intestine is where we can usually find the pancreas. Now, I'm going to just have a little dig down in here and I'll lift, lift him up a bit. This is the pancreas right here, this sort of mushy looking glandular stuff down in here. That's the pancreas, okay? Um, so following along, we have the small intestine, small intestine, and then we find this um, this other coil of intestine which seems to be in its own sac of peritoneum and it is um, and this is the large intestine here okay so it's a little bit of a different looking structure in this mess of intestines so we follow that down and eventually we would get to sort of the colon and then to the rectum and then obviously feces would be ejected out the anus at the end now um, the only other structure, glandular structure, that I'll show you here is this tongue-shaped organ right there. That is the spleen. So again, the site of red blood cell production, breakdown, and storage. Okay, so that is the spleen. Let's have a quick look at sort of the urogenital um, anatomy of this animal. So if I move the intestine aside, I can see this large sort of bean-shaped lobe right here, okay, so that is one of the kidneys. Move it over again, and I can see the other kidney right here, so two kidneys, one on either side, always lying on the dorsal body wall of the animal, and I could probably follow a tube, might be able to see it here. You can see this little tube right there, and that's attached from the kidney down to this structure right here which is the bladder. I can probably find the other little tube right here okay and again that's coming up to the bladder which lies right here alright now 
Um, I had a little peek and I was able to determine um, looking at the external genitalia that this animal is in fact uh, a male. So I'm going to look for the male organs. And the best way to do that um, is really to make some incisions down into sort of the groin area, which is basically sort of into the scrotal area of the animal. And I've gone ahead and done that, made some incisions here. So what I've been able to remove then, uh, you can see this structure and another one on this side. So these are the two testes right here. So this is a clear indication that this is a male animal. Um, the penis would be sort of more in this area. You won't be able to see it because I've removed the tissue, but the penis and then sort of the opening for the urethra um, and also obviously where the sperm would be um, coming out would be in this sort of general area up here. Um, and I'm going to point this out because it looks different in the female. The anus opening is, of course, just at the base of the tail, and you'll see that there's no other genital opening down here at all um, above or technically below the anus. Okay, so that is a male fetal pig. Let's have a quick look at the female. Okay, so pretty much identical except you'll note that I haven't bothered to cut down into the groin area because um, in looking at the genital area, the external genitals, I was able to discern that this was a female. So here uh, we can see the opening for the anus obviously but above that we clearly have um, external female genitalia so there's actually the opening to the vaginal canal above that okay so just from external genitalia we can tell that this is a female animal so let's look for the internal structures that are representative of the female pig so these are much smaller and a little less conspicuous than on the male. We need to go down pretty much to the base of the um, of the bladder and look down along the body wall. Okay, And what we're going to find are the horns of the uterus. So the uterus is actually sort of a V-shaped structure. There's a main body right at the base, but then it branches off to horns on either side. So here we can see this little coil that is one horn of the uterus and if I move this to the other side we should be able to see the second horn of the uterus right here this little coiled structure and of course the ovary would be attached to the top of those on either side so again right here is the horn of the uterus and over here is the horn of the uterus otherwise um, the animals are identical in terms of their abdominal and thoracic organs